Hi guys, it's me Karen and I've come to show you a quick little video here and what this is is the Distress Ink and Oxide Matchup. Okay, I went and got the same colors in these sets. I mean, I had these and I went and got some of these. Now they're the exact same color, Broken China, Dusty Concord, Victorian Velvet. These are the ones that I've been using in um, my coloring books. These guys over here. These are the oxides. Now, the Distress Ink is a water-based ink, which is a transparent ink that you can use on the cook. Well, at least I've been using them on the coloring books. And um, it just goes on really smoothly, unless you do it too hard, and then it goes blotchy. But you can add water to it and fix that problem up gives it a cool effect. You've seen um, my art doing that, but I will do that for you today with these also. These are the oxides, and the oxides are also a water reactive dye and pigment ink infusion. So this is a special formula that Tim Holtz has made out, and when you add water to these, and they get an oxide effect with um, the ink looking kind of a uh, kind of a creamy white. The thing I noticed when I got these and took them out yesterday to see what they would do, number one is you notice the colors are a little different here. We're going to start with the Victorian Velvet since I have my little tools set up for that. So we open them up and this is what the Distress Ink looks like and this is the pad for the oxide. Right away you notice a difference. This is a nice dark color. This is kind of a light color. They are the same pads. They're done in the felt like uh, you've seen these in. The um, lightness of this has got the pigment part of the ink that does the oxidation. Now the Distress ink I picked a page that I could get with a lot of black on here, is, um, like I said, a transparent water-based ink, and it will not show up on dark colors. So if you're doing a color book, you can put this on, and it will not cover up the black lines. But also, if you're doing any kind of multimedia, this ink will not show up on dark paper or black paper. It's just almost invisible. This little guy over here, on the other hand, is not that problem. This will show up on black, this will show up on dark paper, and giving it its uh, little water spray will give it a cool oxidation look also. It will go on regular paper. The problem with the fact that it covers black paper in a coloring book is going to cause a problem. I will show you what I mean. Now I've got um, just the regular mini tools with their little foams on it. And I will start with the Distress Ink. And I am just going to rub it here on a flower and get it all over so you can see how it covers. In fact, I could probably cover this whole page in this color and you could still see it and color on it. Now we'll get the oxide, we'll do the same thing. And I will color in this general area. And you will notice, other than going on nice and smooth, the black lines aren't as crisp as they are here. I will get right in here and show you how it puts this chalky haze. I'll get you down further and get you in frame. So sorry about that. I'll do it again. It puts on a chalky haze on the black printing here, where the Distress Ink does not do that. And no matter how much Distress Ink you put on here, the darker you get, the darker you get, it's still not going to put a haze on any of the black lines like this does. Okay, that's a light coating. Also, there's, um, we're dry. We're not. 
this has a pigment that sits above the paper. It takes longer to dry. Now when I do what I like to do is we'll give it a nice little splattered effect. We add a little water with a little distress thing and we'll just spray it down. And I like to wipe it up off of this one. And I didn't really know how this reacts. So wiping it up, I don't know. But you'll notice here how this is turning a funny color. That is the oxidation that this will do. So it gives it kind of a cloudy look in here. But you'll also notice how wrinkly the paper gets when you do that. Now I know the Distress ink will, with the water, react and we will get that kind of effect also, but we have to wipe the water off, which means it won't sit on the paper as long and it won't crinkle it as much. But this is the oxidation that goes on when you add water to the oxide. The longer it sits, the more of that you're going to see. Dress, dress ink will not do that, but you can get the same effect just adding water and wiping or pulling it off. Now my biggest drawback with these colors, other than the fact that, I mean they're close enough in the color range because they're both the same ink, one with oxidation on it, one without, is the color book, you want to see the black lines. Maybe this would work really good on a background, say a page that has a focus in the center and then an empty white background. And it would probably be a really cool uh, ink to use on that or if you want to bring it in from the side of the paper and stuff. The only problem you have to really watch is the amount of water you have to put on this to get that oxidation look, which is a really cool look, but probably not suited to terribly well for a coloring book. But you can always try it, chat test out your papers. It does go on a lot smoother, uh, like I said, than the uh, Distress Ink because it sits up on top of the tape paper more and you have a lot longer to um, blend it. So if you wanted to blend in two of these uh, inks together, I have the uh, <clears throat> Victorian Velvet there and I will put in some of the uh, Oxide, that's the Dusty Concord, which is a grape color. And again, it's gonna have that white look on it. Put some on the pad. And like I said, if you wanted to blend this into the other color, see how easy that is. Because this color is still <laughs> wet. But again, it's clouding up all of the black. And if I did that with the, get another one here, just the Distress ink, I'll blend it in on this side. You still get the blending, but you still get the black of the coloring book coming through. There's a little bit of water right here if you're wondering why that's standing out too much. But there is your difference. So kind of up to you what you want to do. I don't like the clouding effect on the black in the coloring book. But like I said, if you had a plain white background, in fact, we'll just scoot the book over here because this side is a plain white background. <laughs> and we will take the um, oxide, purple grape or whatever, not dusty concord, and see how smooth, oh, oh, gee, I'm so sorry. See how smooth that goes down. And just a little can go a really long way. 
But if you don't like these little twirly twirlies, just put some more ink on and it'll blend right away. So for giving wise, this ink is great. And in a background that is big and white, that would be wonderful. But trying to get it on um, the black, it's not. And I'll go ahead and throw some water on that and let you see if it will oxidize on this right in front of your eyes. <laughs> see how it's turning that gray color. And it just gives you this really uh, cool effect. And the longer it dries, it'll change a little more. The more water you put on this also, it can pool and make really cool things. Not the best thing to do in your color book, though. <laughs> the paper's thinner. But if you're doing this on cardstock, like the um, picture I did the other day with the, uh, uh, the blue lady, the, the dark angel gal, gal. She, you could probably put a lot of water on that and you could get this effect. I could see this being a, a really pretty background, but I can also see it ruining your coloring books. <laughs> anyway, that is my uh, little test drive to show you what they look like. I will, um, I haven't shown you the blue, so I might as well get some uh, blue down on the page too. I'm just letting you watch that. It's a fun thing to do and it would be great on backgrounds or cards. If you want a uh, smoother uh, look and stuff, it's these um, chalk inks are great for like if you, I used to do um, layouts and planners and it works really great in those because it doesn't seep through your paper. Uh, when you add water onto this stuff, it's, it's gonna it's gonna seep through. <laughs> so that's another thing you got a problem with. Dress, distress ink will not do that because you're putting the water down and you're wiping it off, and it will not bleed through at all. This will. So here we go with the broken china, so you can see the blue. Okay, here is our distress ink so I'll get a nice little color there and here is the oxide and the color shading is a little different too even though that, that there's the same color just get a little more down and then spray that with water. Now this book isn't really good at uh, getting the this dressing to react to it. And I got some purple in there from my rag. Sorry about that. But when that dries, that'll lighten up a little bit. And this just turns into The lovely oxidation which is great again for any projects but if you have painted um, say your background black and you wanted to add some color into it the oxide would work for that you do have to let it dry a lot because this ink has still got some wetness to it not just because of the water. <laughs> it's, it's just the way the ink works. So this is how this is turning out, which is wonderful. But like I said, it will bleed through um, the paper here. So we've got it coming through quite a bit. And then the blue up here, there's a little inking or pencil on this side, but that's the blue up there. So, Take that as you will, whatever you want to do. The oxides are a beautiful 
ink. They would make some great backgrounds on um, plain white background. It does cover up the black lines, so if you're going to use the oxides in that manner, you got to keep that in mind. So I was just going to let you look back over on the other side since I showed you the um, bleed through on that. If I can get this over here. Okay, the distress ink is up here at the top, and then down here was the oxide. And I put water on both, so we've got to look at the top section of this, which is up here. And there's no bleeding or coloration here. This is the oxide, and you can see the color coming through the paper. So, with that being said, on the inks, both beautiful inks, I think they have separate uses. Will I be using um, the oxides in my coloring books? Probably not, unless I'm just doing a white background and bringing it in that way. Do I recommend them? I think that is your... Uh, your opinion that matters more than mine. <laughs> they go down smoother, okay? They don't have as much streaking as the Distress inks do. They're more like a chalky ink. So I think um, you guys can make up your mind on whether you prefer that look or this look, or even if you want to use any inks in your coloring books at all. <laughs> I'm just saying, I probably won't use this when I'm coloring in my book. Because uh, I use the inks to go over the dark. And I like to see the dark. So, this is how it looks all oxidized up. It will wrinkle this particular paper. It's not the best in this book either. It's real thin. And here it is up here on this one. But I'm getting the same effect when I add water on the Distress ink and wipe it up to me. I know this is kind of a gray hue down here with kind of some white edging on it, which is a really pretty effect, but I kind of get the same on mine and I'm just more used to my Distress ink and how it lays down. So with that said, I hope I answered some of the questions that you had between the two. The oxide ink is more of a chalky base. Add water and you'll get the oxide effect. The Distress ink, transparent, goes on, does not bleed through. Color pencils go really well on top of this. Um, because this is chalky base, I don't know if um, it's a Prisma White. And you can see the white will go on top, or the Prisma at least will go on top. It'll also go on top on the Distress ink. So pencils work on top of it. That's fine. Again, like I said, I'm just giving you the information and you guys can figure out which one you prefer or if you like. <laughs> I hope that answered some questions, guys. I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye now.